Hello and welcome to the Wildlife Moto channel. So on today's video, as you can imagine, we're going to be rebuilding the brake calipers on my 1981 BMW R100 CS. Now, before we get on with the build, I want to give you a little bit of the backstory to tell you about how I've got these calipers to where they are today, because it's been a bit of a process. So I took these off my bike back in January time, completely stripped them to pick out the pistons, all the seals, all that kind of stuff, and sent them off to get aqua blasted and Cerakoted. Now, when I got them back from the aqua blasters, I was a little bit concerned about the state of these mating faces and this little bore here. This is the fluid transfer port. So what happens with these calipers is they come in two halves like this and these are bolted together. Now, fluid comes in through one side. Some of that fluid is directed into a little bore uh, down here inside uh, the piston bore. Uh, so that injects fluid out here and pushes the piston up. And then the rest of the fluid is allowed to transfer through this port into the other half of the caliper. Now to make sure we don't get any leaking here, there's a little O-ring that sits inside this seat. Now, as you can see, when I got these calipers back from aqua blasting, there was quite a bit of corrosion and pitting around the little rings here on some of these caliper halves. So I was quite concerned at the time that I wouldn't be able to get a proper seal once these caliper halves were bolted together. My concern was that fluid might be able to make its way either behind the O-ring, uh, through the little pits and scores that were caused by the corrosion and then maybe leak out, or maybe we wouldn't be able to get enough clamping force on the O-ring because the aluminium behind it simply wasn't there anymore. So there was a risk that these calipers could leak. Now I took a few photos and I sent them off to a few experts and the general consensus was that they, they shouldn't be put back on the road in that state. I know some people think they, they might have sealed up and I tend to agree they may well have done, but I just wasn't happy with what I'd seen. Now, one of the great things about YouTube is that a lot of the people that watch the channel have got a lot of contacts and uh, really kind of know what they're talking about. Uh, one such guy, a guy called Paul, got in touch with me and said, look, I think with a bit of machining, you might be able to save those calipers. And it just so happens that Paul knew a guy who uh, could possibly help me out. Now, the guy he put me in touch with was a guy called Luke from a company called Stratos Performance. That's Luke's company. And Luke is a machinist. Um, he does a lot of amazing stuff. This is one of the sprockets that he makes for the Royal Enfield Interceptor. This is a 36 tooth sprocket made from hardened aluminium and anodized in-house. He works on a whole bunch of amazing projects, but he's got his own kind of product line as well. This is one of the uh, brake fluid caps that he makes for the rear reservoir on the interceptor as well. So I'm going to do a separate video showing some of the products that Luke makes and uh, we'll get some of that stuff installed on my interceptor. But he creates wonderful stuff. One of the things he doesn't do is people's brake calipers. He's not in that business and he wanted me to make this really clear. So although he's got all the kit and he's got the capabilities and he makes his own stuff and he does project work, doing calipers is something that he's done as as a big big favor so i want to say a massive thank you to luke so let's have a look at some of his work let's have a look at what has been achieved here so you can see on the um, mating faces here of these calipers we have removed a tiny amount of material we've cut to put it in real terms, something like a couple of human hairs worth of material off from the faces of each of these caliper halves. We've also dropped the bore size down in line with the amount of material that was removed here. So the step down is exactly the same. And we have been very, very careful to only remove the, the bare minimum amount of material. You can see inside this port here, some of that corrosion is still present, but we've managed to get it to the point where the seat is now flat. So that O-ring will sit perfectly fine against there. This one is still the, the kind of worst in terms of corrosion, but on, on most of them, in fact, all of the others, we've managed to completely eliminate it. Again, just by dropping down the, the face here and then dropping down the bore to the same dimension so that that O-ring will sit perfectly flat in this new surface. Now, 
you might also look at these and think, gosh, they look a little bit rough. What's going on there? This is a trick of the light. If you're used to looking at machine surfaces, you'll know this, but maybe if you haven't seen something like this before, you might be thinking that looks a little bit like it's got a bunch of grooves in it. This is so smooth, it's unbelievable. In machine talking, in terms of roughness average, it's probably about 0.3 but it's incredibly smooth. So I think these calipers have been saved. Um, what we've got to do now is go ahead and refit the seals, the pistons, and all that stuff back inside each of these caliper halves. And I'll uh, kind of walk you through what I'm gonna do with these. This is not a how-to, by the way, this is just what I'm doing. Uh, not that I'm gonna do anything particularly uh, crazy with these. I'm just gonna follow what I've been told to do in uh, all of these uh, instructions that you get with these kits here. So opening up these Brembo kits, um, inside here you get new bolts, dust seal, so we've got two dust seals, that's the little o-ring we've been talking about, and then we've got the little square seals that are going to go inside the piston ball. And you get a little bit of grease in there as well, a little bit of Brembo special grease. I'm just going to pour a little bit of brake fluid into this glass and we're just going to leave um, the seals in there for a little bit. There you go, that'll do you. And the other thing I'm going to do very quickly is just get a little bit of brake cleaner in here and just remove somebody's written my initials in there so that they know that these are mine. Now these guys are symmetrical, so we don't need to worry about uh, orientation or anything like that on these particular seals. Some calipers are slightly different, but these ones will go in anyway. Just make sure that that is all nice and flush. Okay, so that's the new seals in there. The next thing we want to do is get our new pistons and we're going to insert these into the bore here. Now to help these guys in, that's what we're going to use our little bit of Brembo grease. Get a little bit of grease on our fingers. A little outer edge of the pistons there. And we'll just go around The ball like that. Don't need a huge amount. And then we should be able to just push this guy straight into the ball like that. Bingo. All right, so the next thing to do is just press on the little dust caps. So we should just slide around like that, just run your finger around and you just kind of click into place like that. Next thing we want to do is to get this little o-ring seated back in here and we can use a little bit more of this grease just to kind of help that stick in place. You've got to be a bit careful with this o-ring because it has to seat perfectly. If it's kind of that a bit of a wonk like that when you seal it, I mean you'll know because you'll feel it but it's not going to seal properly. So you've got to make sure that we, uh, we can keep this in its little groove like that as we're bolting things back together. Put two bolts in there. And that just helps us land it so that we haven't moved that O-ring at all. Just gonna finger tighten them for now. And then I've got in here my little SBV kit. As I said, we're not going to talk these now. Just get them enough so that we're, um, we're clamped. Okay, so we're ready for the final stage in getting this caliper back together. Uh, what we've got here are some new stainless steel retaining pins and we've got our new brake pads. These are copper backed EBC pads, all ready to rock and roll. Now, <laughs> like all things in life, Nothing ever goes smoothly, does it? It's because I have discovered a little bit of a problem. 
Uh, these are the new pins, as I said, that I got from Motorworks a little while back. And I've just kind of test fitted these into the little holes here in the caliper. And I've got to say, um, yeah, not loving the way they're going in there. There's definitely nothing that suggests that these are going to be able to be driven into these holes securely. They're just kind of sliding about like that. So that is not right. So I just ran out to the garage to compare the pins that I removed originally from these calipers. And as you can see, uh, yeah, a little bit of a different story there. And this little ring here lines up far better when we put this in here and uh, that is ready to be drifted in place. So unfortunately, for whatever reason, um, I've got the wrong pins. Now, having looked at the rest of the bits and pieces, this little bit in the middle still seems to be the same as the outgoing one. And this little bit here still seems to be the same. And I think you agree these pins are not in terrible condition at all. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse these. Um, I'll have a kind of look into what went wrong in regards to these pins. Um, but yeah, they, they are not going to fit. So we can set those aside and we'll crack on using the old pins. Okay, so I've got everything cleaned up for this step in the process, just made sure there's no grease kind of hanging around and all that. And we'll crack on using the old pins from the calipers and the new little um, retaining clip and the little center pin. So I'll keep the pads kind of sandwiched together for this just to protect them. I'm not going to put any grease anywhere near these, I'm not putting grease on the back of the pads or anything like that. So we're just going to slot those in there like that until everything lines up. Put this in there like that and try to fish the little stake through the hole. There you go. So that's all set in there like that. Let's just lay down the little center pin. Finally, let's push the last one in and make sure that it sits underneath the pin like that. So now everything's kind of clamped in place. So what we've got to do now is just drive these pins all the way through. So there you go. That's the first one done. Uh, we've got our two pins nicely staked through there. Everything's lined up nicely. Our two pads at the moment are kind of spread apart, which leaves them in a good place for inserting these over the disc when the time comes. Now, I've got to remember that these bolts are not torqued. So what I do is I just stick a little bit of green tape over these just to remind me. One little job to do, and that is to put the new bleeder on there. I believe it goes in this one. I think that's correct. So that just screws in there. Just like that. <laughs> Come on. And fall at the final hurdle. Just like that. And it's actually normal to have a little bit of thread showing here, I believe, because what you want it to do is bottom out in the bore and not bottom out on the nut. So a little bit of thread showing there is perfectly fine. These only need to be nipped up. So the max is about 10 Newton meters. So I will at some point talk that, but for now, I'll just snug it on there like so. I also have in here a nice little blingy blingy little cover for these. I went for gold because I'm a tart. But so uh, yeah, happy days. That's our first one done. Okay, here we go. Let's do the next one. Okay, so exactly the same as previously. We've got our two seals, two bolts. Give these a little bath in the old brake fluid. Got our new pistons out. Set your little seals in there. And they'll just snap in. It's these seals that help to push back the pistons after they've been actuated. Okay, let's grease up the bores.
Okay, and then what we're going to do, same as last time, we'll just put a little bit of this grease on the piston as well, making sure it stays nice and square. Push it in, and then you'll feel it push past the seal. Beautiful. Push past the seal. And then we just clip on the little dust seals like that. Just run your finger around the outside of the piston and the dust seal just kind of follows. Now we want to get our O-ring in place. Again, we'll put a little bit of grease on it. Like so. It just sits there like that. It's that one and that one. And then just use the bolts to kind of guide us down. You see the threaded half, just making sure that we do not disturb that o-ring. Go ahead and tighten it by hand as much as you can. Obviously new steel bolts going into alley threads, good to do it by hand just to get a feel for any potential issues with the thread as much as you can. You shouldn't have to yank on these with any big tools to get them in. Eventually, as I said with the first one, these will require around 50 newton meters of torque. But for now, we're just gonna cinch them up. This is my old bag full of old <laughs> bits and pieces from these calipers when I took them apart. And here are the two pins. Thankfully still perfectly serviceable. We insert our brake pads into the caliper, keeping them together like this. And then we want to just drop this down. Through there. Little center pin sits on there. And that's going to get clamped down on there. And then the final bit this one comes in. That's where it gets a little bit tight. Let's get it in as far as I can for now. And we're ready to start giving these pins a bit of a whack. That is the second caliper reassembled. As you can see here, new pads in place. Reuse the old pins because, as I said, goodness knows what's going on with these ones. Clearly not right, but good job I checked. And we've got the new center pin and the new retaining clip, which are exactly the same shape in the kit that I've got as the outgoing one. So uh, yeah, all good. And I've gone for speed bleeders uh, for this setup. I have to admit, I haven't actually used these before, but apparently they are pretty good. The idea being there's a little ball bearing in here making these basically one way. So you don't have to keep cracking them and closing them when you bleed your brakes. You just go ahead and open them up and then just pump fluid in. Don't need a lot of torque on these. That definitely isn't going to stay there, is it? I'm going to need a better solution for this. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, we'll just nip them up for now. And check that in due course. The finishing touch. I have to say these caps don't feel like the best fit in the world. But I believe that's on. So there you go then, all back together, all looking good. Just again, want to say a massive thank you to Luke and Paul for hugely helping me out with these calipers. As you can see, I'm really very impressed with how these have gone back together. Absolutely bang on flush on the seals there so far. So obviously we will need to pressure test them and make sure that um, you know nothing untowards happens, but it looks like a, a happy ending to this story for now. So the last little bit of the puzzle is just make sure we clip on our little covers here like that. So they just go on over there. And we've got another one for the other side. And then we're done. Definitely gonna to need to find a new <laughs> solution for my 
reminder to talk tape but yeah yeah for now yeah so yeah really happy with that it's been a bit of a journey but so many things on these old bikes always are aren't they they um will test your patience sometimes and these calipers have certainly done that but they've been through the process you know they've they've had everything done to them now from being aqua blasted and seracoated to having the corrosion machined off of them to getting new pistons new seals new pads everything like that new bleed valves new bolts they should be absolutely as good as new anyway thank you very much for watching until the next one ride safe <laughs>